Northeast Outpour Outdoors Everything Fishing and today we are going to do part two of how to catch Great Lakes Steelhead. So we're going to be talking about terminal tackle, we're going to be talking about bait, we're going to be talking about lines. I actually just was out on the water the day before yesterday and I filmed how I set up my, my, my main line and my leader line with um, weights, floats, shot, all that. So I'm gonna put that in the link in the description uh, so I don't have to talk about it all here. I fish for them other ways too, but we'll get into videos about other ways in the future, but we're gonna cover a lot in this video. So uh, get a cup of coffee, get whatever you need, and just hang tight. So let's get into it. So I actually filmed a video also of this bag, this new bag that I, that I got. I filmed a little like first look review. But we're gonna we're gonna go through what I have in this bag. And this is pretty much everything you'll need. Um, let me start by saying that everyone fishes for these fish a little bit differently. Um, these, these videos, while if you're an advanced angler, you can watch them and I'm sure you can gain something from them. Maybe something you didn't know, because I gain stuff from people all the time. But this is more for like, your beginner angler that's looking for his conf his or her confidence baits, looking to really um, get their bearings and get their wheels turning on uh, steelhead fishing. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys learn something from it. So this is my bag. Um, when you look in the main compartment of my bag, that's how you're gonna see it. Um, you're probably gonna have a lot of the same stuff in your bag, other than these two big batteries because I use these for to make sure my, go my GoPro <laughs> stays charged. Let's take some of this stuff out and let's just let's just go through it. Let's just talk about what you're gonna be using when I'm um, fishing for steelhead, okay? So that's everything out of the main compartment. And we'll get into the top plastics after. So let's start by talking about leader line. Whether I'm using a center pin or a spinning setup or a bait casting setup, you're always gonna have your main line and your leader line. Um, I never, ever, ever fish for steelhead with just one line going from my reel to my hook. Um, why don't I do it that way? <laughs> because if you have just one line going from your main line to your hook, and let's say you have a float, let's say you have shot, whatever you have on that line, let's say you break off, you have a huge possibility to break off all of your tackle. And you don't wanna do that. If you break off, all you wanna break off is the hook or your leader line. So my main line is usually anywhere from 12 to 10 pound, depending on where you fish and what kind of fish you're fishing for. Let's say um, you have the possibility of hooking into kings all the time. You might wanna go to a 14. You don't necessarily have to, but uh, you might wanna think about it. So on my reel, I'll have 10 pound, and then my leader line is always going to be less. So it's the weakest link, therefore that is what breaks. For my main line, I always use monofilament. Why do I use monofilament? Because uh, it's cheaper and because it floats. Those are two really good attributes for main line to have. In my other video that I made when I showed you my setup on my center pin, not all monofilament is created equal. Therefore, you want to opt for not necessarily always the most expensive one, but you wanna opt for one that's like really, really good quality. If it's, if it's like a dollar for 300 yards, I would shy away from it. You're gonna have breaking problems. Also, it's gonna have a lot of memory. You know, like if, it, uh, if, you're, using a, if you're using a spinning reel, it's just gonna coil up a lot. You know, the, the more, the better quality your monofilament, usually the less memory it has. Also, the smaller the diameter of your monofilament, the less me memory it has. That's also why I like to use 10 pound. As light as I can go, that's what I wanna go with because it just makes my day out on the water easier. It helps with memory, it helps with line twist, it helps with all of that stuff. So if you can go 10 or 12, that's golden. When it comes to leader line, these are the two lines I use. I use fluorocarbon red label. This is usually what I use the most um, because I have a bigger bag now, I take them both. But this is usually what would have been just in my waders and just this is what I use for my leader line. But if the water is a little bit darker, I like to go with an eight pound. I really trust the Seaguar brand. Um, whatever you build confidence in, 
I mean, you know, I, I'm not sponsored by anybody. I just, this is the stuff that I use every day on a daily basis. So I, I've just had good experience with Seaguar and um, it's good. So that's what I'm gonna be using for my leader line. So there's, there's line out of the way. There's the stuff you want. You want some monofilament for your main line and then you want some fluorocarbon for your leader line. Let's move on. Let's talk about your terminal tackle, okay? This is my terminal tackle box. And if you saw this first episode, I say that this is the second most important thing when dealing with steelhead, your tackle, your line, all of that. I said that rods and reels were the least important and I said that this was the second most important. Why did I say that? Because this is what the fish are gonna see. This is what the fish are gonna come into contact with. So you want your line to be really good. Before you, you go and get the most beautiful custom rod and reel, you wanna make sure that you got this stuff dialed in. And then the most important is where are the fish, which is the next episode. So hooks. I use two sizes of hooks. I keep it super simple. I don't do anything too fancy, okay? So I got size six hooks and I got size eight hooks. The size eight hooks are a little bit smaller. Let's say I'm running a bead setup, for instance. Like if I'm running a bead setup, I usually always use a size eight hook. If I'm running a spawn sack on just a hook, I'll use a size six hook. This hook here is a size six and this is the hook I use the most. I mean, I have like 20 packs in my basement because I just, this is the hook that I use the most. So that's just your regular size six little circle hook. And that hook is made by Owner, which I love Owner hooks. Those are good hooks, so if you're looking for a hook, Owner is a good company to look for. And then this is the size eight, which is what I use for my bead setups and such. And that hook is a Gamagatsu hook. So if you're looking for a good solid hook, Owner or Gamagatsu, good brands. And then also, I have some J hooks in here, which I don't even know the brand of these, but they're pretty sharp. And this is what I'll use if for instance, I'm gonna put a night crawler on, um, which I usually don't, but if I'm gonna if I'm gonna use a night crawler, I use a regular J hook, which I think I just got those hooks from Walmart. I'm not sure what the brand is. Next type of hooks I use, I use a two aught and a three aught circle hook. So here's a three aught. <clears throat> and here's your two aught. And these two hooks are what I'll use if I'm floating skein, like straight up chunks of bait. So I'll tie a, um, and if you don't, you, if you don't know this, all this terminology, that's okay. You could just ask me in the comments below and, or, or just search it on Google. But if I, if I'm going to be floating like a big chunk of bait, I'll use one of those hooks. And those hooks are also Gamagatsu hooks. Another thing you're gonna wanna have in your tackle box is barrel swivels. These are little, little tiny barrel swivels. These are made by VMC. Um, you could get them on Blood Run Tackle. You can get them from Raven. But I get these from Cabela's Bass Pro Shop and they're VMC. And these here are size 12. Um, size 12 micro swivels are money. That's the, the size I like. You can go down to a 14, but I really like size 12. And I use two different sizes of split shot, just two, that's, that's all I use. You can have like a whole big box of split shot in every single size imaginable but I don't, use, I don't use all those sizes because I actually use inline weights to connect my main line to my fluorocarbon leader. So sometimes you need bigger split shot. You start with the bigger shot on the top and then you go down and you kind of taper down to smaller shot. I actually don't do that. 
depending on the float I'm using, I use these barrel swivel, not barrel swivels, these inline weights. So I have them in all sizes for whatever I need. And um, instead of using big shot under my, under my float, I use one of those and then I taper shot down to my hook to get my presentation down the correct way. Let's talk about split shot. This, the split shot that I use, not all split shot is created equal. So you gotta be very careful with your split shot. The split shot that I like to use is called soft shot and it's by Blood Run Tackle. And it is, it's lead, which if you go to any store in New York state, you're not gonna find lead shot. You gotta order it online. And this stuff is insanely soft. It's so soft. I know you can't see that. And the, the opening that it has is really big. I don't know if you guys can see it. So it's really soft. The opening's really big. It's lead shot. And I use one that's 0.3 grams and one that's 0.4 grams. Super light, both of them. I get the correct weight to float my float from my inline weight mostly. The split shot is just to get my presentation down the way I need to get it down. That's how I do it. But when you're looking at shot, you want soft shot because this stuff is going on my leader line. You don't wanna put any really harsh shot on your leader line. Let's say you gotta move it up and down or something, that can fray your line and, and ultimately break your line. So you want the shot to literally say soft shot. Lead is the best. So that's what's in the whole bottom section of my terminal tackle box here. Your terminal tackle box is gonna look a little bit different. You're gonna, you're gonna get confidence in what you do and the ways you like to do it. I'm not trying to tell you that this is the end all be all, but what I'm trying to do is if you're a beginner, I'm trying to give you a place to start, a place to start experimenting and see the way you like to fish. Also in here, I have these little teardrop weights in all different sizes from tiny to pretty large. And I use those for drop shot setups. A lot of people don't fish a drop shot and, or don't even think about a drop shot when they fish for steelhead. Um, and I don't know why, it, it, it's, it's so effective. So a lot of places you're gonna fish for steelhead, sometimes they're gonna be an impenetrable barrier. So the steelhead are gonna be running up the stream, right? And then there's gonna be something that stops them. Um, whether it's a little, whether it's a waterfall or, or a rock bank or something's gonna stop them and create that hole there. And they're gonna rest there until they can penetrate that barrier. So until, until, until the rain lifts up the creek again, those fish are gonna be there. So what better way to fish for those guys than a drop shot? There's usually current there. Sometimes it's coming for, down from the waterfall. Sometimes there's little spots where um, the current like kind of intersects. So it makes like this like swirl. So the current's going this way. And if you see, if you see spots like that, there's fish sitting in there. So what I like to do is I like to set up a drop shot. What is a drop shot? A drop shot is when you have one of these weights, like a teardrop weight, and you, you tie the weight onto the bottom of your line, right? And then a little bit up from the line, you put the hook about a foot up, and then you tie that line to your main line. You don't use a float, nothing. All you do is use the hook and this weight, and you just put your bait on that hook. And my favorite baits to fish on a drop shot are like um, little minnows usually. You can obviously use an egg sack. You can use wax worms, night crawlers. I mean, drop shots are just so effective. If you have a spot like that and you think the fish are in a certain spot, what you do is you chuck your drop shot right next to the spot, not directly on top of it. Not like you're, not like you're fishing for bass and trying to get a reaction bite. You, you chuck it next to the spot and then you just reel it right to the spot and just let it sit there. The fish cannot handle it. They can't handle it. And, and, and the strikes are just unbelievable. And it's one of the best ways to catch fish if you don't have a run to float. 
I don't know why more people don't use a drop shot. That was a long rant. Next little section here is bobber stops. So there's two types of bobber stops that I use. I use these little bobber stops, which are just little plastic things. You, you, you put your line through, you slide them on, and they do exactly what they say. They stop your bobber. And then there's these, which you put this little tube on your line, you, you, you slide this down, and then you tighten the little thread, and that'll stop your bobber too. Like I say in most things, uh, neither one is better than the other. I like them both, but it's really your preference if you like one more than the other. Also on this bottom section, I have my tubing, which the tubing there is just for the specific floats that need tubing, which I'm gonna get into that when I get to the bag of floats. And then also in this little box, oh, also I have some tippet rings in there, but we don't gotta talk about that. Then also in this box, I have beads. Um, a couple different colors of beads, which can be a very, very effective way to fish for steelhead. I'm going to, I'll make a video of a, of a bead setup. I haven't made one yet, but when I, fit, when I get out and when I fish a bead setup, I'll definitely show you guys a, a, a bead setup. So here's the little plastic things. You put that through the, through the eye of the bead, and then you put it on your line and you put a hook about maybe two inches, an inch and a half down from the bead. And when that fish takes the bead, you set the hook and the hook will go right into the side of its mouth. It's a really awesome way to fish. I don't fish beads much, um, but you know, it's a good way to fish. Floats. This is my little bag of floats that I take with me when I go out on the, on the river. A couple different types of floats I like to use. Let's start with the old trusty cigar float. I went out with my buddy one time and I threw one of these floats on and he started making fun of me. He was like, <laughs> he was like, Sam with the cigar. And man, I mean, yeah, it's a cigar float, but this thing's awesome. It's easy, it's weighted. You don't gotta do much. You know, if, if you just wanna tie, tie together a quick rig, and throw one of these things on your line, man, there ain't no shame. Those things work great. If the current's really slow, use one of the little small ones. I like these, these are weighted too. You know, I don't mind using those little cigar floats. So these are gonna be called inline or slip floats. And the reason why is because your line is going to go through the float. You're gonna have a bobber stop, a bead, and then a bead and then a bobber stop and then it's gonna go down um, to your weight, leader, whatever whatever you're doing. And um, these things are super effective. And the reason why I really like these, these type of floats is because you can just grab your line and you grab this float and you just yank it down and it's gonna, it's gonna put you in a, 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 lesser, a, a lesser depth. If you grab it, you grab your line and you, like it, you yank it up, it's just gonna give you more depth. It's just really, 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 really easy to use. Um, as well as the next float I'm gonna show you, but this this float is, is, is awesome. So when you go to the store, what you're gonna wanna look for is you're gonna wanna look for a slip float. Um, if the guy is there, if there's a guy there working and he has knowledge about steelhead, there's gonna be slip floats that are more tailored to um, like catfish um, you don't want to get those. You, you want to go for like something like these. These are li really lightweight, and the the float. The reason why you don't really want to fish the ones that are made for catfish, which they'll work. I'm not saying they won't work, but they they're gonna plop down on the water way harder. Those the the ones that are made for catfish, they'll make some usually, and and um, they usually have like glow in the dark tops, and uh, they're heavier. They're weighted usually. So, so you want to you want to avoid those because they're as soon as you you flick that thing in the water, that thing's gonna plop down super 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 loud. So um, you want to avoid those. Um, in floats, I like to use a small float, eight five to eight grams, and then I like to use a heavier float that is around eleven to fourteen grams. So those are the those are the sizes of floats that I use and the gram size. It's going to tell you how much split shot you need or how much weight you need under your float 
to get it to float right here where it's supposed to and get it to, to travel in that water the way you want it to. So here's the next kind of float that I use. So I have this, this, this larger one, which like I said, is an 11 gram. And then I have this tiny, 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 tiny little one that is a uh, 3.5, super tiny. So these floats work a little differently, but they have the same concept. You actually don't need a bobber stop for these floats. They have these little, these little tubing there. See that tubing? There's a little piece of tubing on the top and a little piece of tubing on the bottom. And what you do is you put these pieces of tubing on your line and then you just throw the, throw the bobber right in between those tubing and it holds it on the line. Usually you can just grab this and just pull it right down your line to, to measure depth and, and it works great. It works just as good as the slip float. It, it's completely your preference. Whatever you want to use and however you want to use um, your floats, that's how you choose your float. But those are, those are the three types of floats that I use. And then if I'm fly fishing, just a plus, uh, I use the thing of a bobber. And uh, that's it, so the floats. Okay, so next let's talk some, some jigs. Um, I actually do carry this fly box with me as well with a ton of stuff in it, but I'm gonna make a specific video just speaking on flies because that's just a whole nother world. So we're gonna talk about that next time. But I'm definitely gonna go into this box, which this box has my um, my jigs and uh, a couple other things. It does have a couple flies that I use the most, but just some jigs. Here are here are some woolly buggers, which are very similar to like a marabou jig, but it doesn't have a, a jig head. And I have those in all different colors. I got some pink, I got some olive, I got some small black, big black, white and yellow and um if you go to the store and you want to get some decent steelhead baits look for woolly buggers they're going to be in the fly fishing section these things are bomb in the rest of this box i have some marabou jigs and i also have a couple more flies let's get up let's let's, let's pull you up closer here so i can show you what's in this box okay so here I have some really tiny, 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 tiny hook um, jigs. And these jigs are deadly. Sorry, you're all up in my grill right now, but I just wanna show you this stuff. So these jigs here are deadly. They are um, called Euro jigs. Um, and the hooks on them are Gamagatsu. They're really, really sharp hooks. Then you have a jig like this, which has a couple beads there. It kind of looks like some eggs. Got the, the pink and white skirt. Got a little bit of gold flake in there. And the hook on this is actually an owner hook. These are made by the same company. They're called, um, they're not called Euro, sorry. They're called Aero. So I think it's A-R-O if you see them in the store. And then I, you can use like jigs like this, which this jig has like a Gamagatsu hook, has a Gamagatsu hook on it. These are good stuff. And guys, I got these at my local Walmart. You can get these at Walmart, you can get them at Dick's, you can get them at Bass Pro, Cabela's. So whatever you got around you, you can usually find these exact jigs. And right on the package, they're gonna say that they're made with owner hooks or they're made with Gamagatsu hooks. And these hooks are super sharp, super nice jigs. And a lot of times you can throw these guys just with nothing on them. You can just float these guys with nothing on them or, or, or bounce them in a hole. And you'd be surprised, man. You, you start twitching those jigs in a hole, those, uh, those fish go insane. I also like to throw very, very small mar marabou jigs. Don't be afraid to throw small, small hooks. Um, I've caught some of the biggest fish that I've caught on a hook that is insanely tiny. So don't be afraid to throw a small hook. Don't automatically think, big fish, I gotta throw a big hook. That's, that's not the way these fish work. 
you can throw a very, very small, small hook. There's a white marabou jig. Just giving you guys some ideas of some stuff that you could be throwing at these guys. Just make sure whatever marabou jigs you buy, um, that they have decent, decent hooks in them, all that. These are called, these are little egg flies. And um, these things are deadly. You don't need to be fly fishing to um, use an egg fly. You can use this right under your float, no matter what you're fishing with. You can fish with spinning gear, center pin gear, whatever you're fishing with, you can use these egg flies. And man, if the egg, if the egg fly bite is on, it's on. When this, when this bite is on, it's on all day. So my opinion with these things is when I go out with them and if I get a bite on them, it stays pretty hot. They make them like this, which is just regular. And I think they're made by Atlas, I think. And um, they're called like yarn balls. And there's a, there's a red one. You got them in, um, in pink and um, so those things are bomb, man. And they, they, when they get wet, they sink good. They also have these, um, which have a little, um, like a little yolk. It's representing the yolk of, a, of, a, of an egg. And I, I believe these are called blood dots. This is not the specific blood dot because it's made with a yarn ball. The, the real blood dot is actually tied. But um, this is a really, really effective little fly for them. And if you're looking for those, they're gonna be called blood dots. So, so look those up and you're gonna find that fly. These flies here are called squirmy wormies. And these are pretty deadly too. If, um, if the bite is tough, <laughs> like real tough, um, before I go, I'll usually try one of these. When the bite is tough, for some odd reason, this is my go-to. This is what I'll go to to, um, to see if, those, if I can get that last chance fish. And I got these in, in pink, which is the one I usually use. And then I got them in a, in a darker color, like a red. So there's some ideas that you can, um, you can create a little tackle box, a little fly box. Um, marabou jigs are great. You know, these are just ones that I got from Bass Pro. Just make sure the hooks are good. And uh, egg flies, great. You're gonna find them in like the fly fishing section. Uh, these, these, oops, these little jigs here are aero jigs. Um, but that's not the only people who make them. You just wanna make sure the hooks are, are good and you make sure the, the hook is, is, is small. And I'm gonna get into what, I would, what I'm gonna be throwing on those, those little jigs. If you go out with just this box, you should be able to hook into a fish. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of stuff to try. So I, I just put another little little fly thing in there and then this box is just full of stuff. Let's move on to one last thing that I use for bait and that's soft plastics. Okay, so it's no secret. Um, especially on my channel. My favorite, and I have the bigger ones too, but these are the smaller ones. My favorite soft plastic of all time is the Mad River Worm. I throw them in glowing pink. I throw them in regular bubblegum pink, which is my go-to. Bubblegum pink is my go-to. I throw them in a chartreuse. I throw them in a white. And a little secret for you. Don't be scared to throw blue because uh, they don't see it a lot. And I don't know if someone's gonna get mad at me for that, but don't be scared to throw blue. I don't, I don't have blue right now, but um, I've even, I've caught fish on blue beads. So, so blue, don't be scared. If you can find these, these are actually real emerald shiners. They're not, they're, they're not fake, they're real. And they are just put into these bags and um, they use some, some type of thing to keep them, to preserve them. And I get these right from Walmart and I've seen them in Cabela's. Uh, but this is the small size. And man, um, especially in the beginning of the season. So right in the beginning of fall, you're gonna go out into the creeks um, and you're gonna see 
a billion of these straight up i i would i would bet money that there's a billion of these in the creeks there's so many of them you see them in just these swarms of schools and uh the fish are going to be looking for dead ones so that's precisely what this is a dead one so if you drift this under a float um, that's a good way to go especially in the beginning of the season also i talked about that drop shot setup right this is usually what i throw on a drop shot setup these are just gulp minnows and this is another thing that a lot of people don't throw. So these are stinky little goat minnows. You can throw that on a drop shot. Another thing that I like to throw is these are these are not made by gulp. These are make, made by Berkeley. You're gonna look for a Berkeley little split tail minnow. This is usually a bait that um, that they're gonna use for you know crappie stuff like that. But this bait. I'm telling you guys, just believe me, it's deadly for steelhead. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff you can use for steelhead. So you, when you go out there, you gotta be prepared and you gotta just, um, which it's not even that much stuff. My bass tackle bag is like eight times the size of this. So this is not that much stuff to take for, to go fishing for steelhead. And uh, I didn't talk about tippet, but I'm gonna do a, a video on on um, fly fishing. because That's like a whole other world. I know I keep saying that, but but we'll get into that. So yeah, guys, so what did I show you? I showed you jigs, I showed you some flies, I showed you some terminal tackle, I showed you line, I showed you line, live bait, um, soft plastics. Man, if you made it this far in the video, I really, really hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I got everything back in the bag, and um, this is actually pretty lightweight, you know? So if you're gonna carry uh, about that amount of stuff, don't worry about breaking your back, because I mean, this is it's pretty lightweight. And I also carry more stuff in here. I carry my batteries. Um, in here I have my gloves, I usually have my coffee, and I usually throw my net on this bag too. So um, so yeah, guys, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, stay tuned for the next video, which is the most important installment, guys, where to catch these fish. So I'm gonna break it down. I'm gonna get, down, I'm gonna get on Google Maps, and I'm gonna show you no matter where you live, where how you can go and how you can just look for these fish, the key areas that you can look for, the way the water is, the way the water looks. I'm gonna go into specific areas that are hot spots, not specific spots. We're not gonna tell you specific spots, but I'm going to tell you the specific areas that these fish hold up. And no matter where you live, if you live by a Great Lake, no matter if you live in Michigan, New York, Ohio, I don't know where else there's great, where else is there? Detroit, I think. Um, wherever you live, you will be able to get on a tributary and catch these fish with the knowledge that I'm gonna give you in the next video. So thank you so much for watching this video. Like I said, I think I said it three times, but I really hope it helps you out. And uh, God bless, get out there. If you liked the video, please subscribe. Please subscribe to the channel, it really helps me out. Please leave a like down below. If you are an experienced angler, um, I really want to tell you that you should get in the comment section below and just kind of throw a little bit of the stuff that you use in there if I didn't cover it because there's other stuff that people use and if it could help a, a, a new angler out, that'd be awesome. This is all about getting anglers out and um, getting more people onto fish so um, and more people addicted to the bite. So have a great day. Uh, outpour East, Outpour Outdoors, everything fishing, and I'll see you on the next video.